Hey there, girlfriend. Have you ever wondered how to build your self-esteem and your confidence in yourself? Well, we're gonna get to the bottom of that in today's video. We'll see you on the other side. Hey there, Sheena, how you doing, girl? Hey, thank you so much for having me here today. It's such an honor to be here and super excited to just talk about confidence and everything else in between. Yes, yes, yes. So um, I'm excited to have you as well. But before we get into how to build our self-esteem and confidence in ourselves, I wanted you to tell us a little bit about you, who you are, who you serve, and how you serve them. Hi everyone, my name is Sheena Yapchan. I am a keynote speaker, Wall Street Journal bestselling author, consultant, and podcaster on building self-confidence and leadership. Uh, for me, it was really important to have more women leaders. Uh, one of the things I really want to do is to close the, the gender gap that we still face today in all industries so we can have more women in leadership. I do believe when we have more women in leadership, we can create a better impact in this world. Uh, so, you know, I have my book, The Tao of Self-Confidence, that's out now. Um, I have my podcast, also this under the same name, where I've interviewed over 800 women on the topic of confidence. And I've also um, done talks and workshops for organizations and corporations on the subject. So super excited to be here uh, to just chat some more. <laughs> awesome. So I'm curious, how did you start on this confidence journey? Yeah, that's a great question. Really, it started with my own confidence in 2015. You know, I was dealing with my own confidence issues, you know, growing up in Asia, in an Asian household and Asian culture. Yeah. I always felt like I didn't have a voice. I always felt like I couldn't share what I was feeling. And so because of that, I just went through so many issues, not feeling good enough, feeling like I had to please everyone else except for myself. Right. Um, and so I started looking for resources that really catered to Asian women's confidence. And this was in 2015, so not even years ago and I realized there wasn't any and so part of me thought maybe I was the only one dealing with these issues not realizing a lot of women deal with it it's just we don't talk about it and right. also representation was really important for me growing up in Toronto in the 90s you know Toronto is a very multicultural city like I love this city because you can literally try every cuisine in the world here but there was no media representation for Asian Asian right. people, right? I didn't see anybody in the media that looked like me, whether it was a billboard, a cover of a magazine, a TV show, a movie. And so it was really hard to see myself in in other things, right? Just to just dream bigger and stretch. And right. so I, I created the podcast, The Tao of Self-Confidence, as a support system and representation. So being able to interview so many women from around the world, uh, sharing their stories it made me realize I was the I wasn't the only one dealing with this and it made me learn about confidence a little bit more learning about myself you know uh, just a little bit more and just seeing that the impact it's created I'm just truly grateful I mean when I first started I had no clue what I was doing but I knew I just needed to get something out there so that women can start believing in this themselves can start seeing their own confidence their courage their capabilities uh, they know you know they can realize that they have it in them and it just takes a shift in their mindset to realize what they're capable of. That's awesome. So the 800 people, I know you you said that initially in your intro, the 800 women that you've interviewed, are they from all nationalities and walks of lives? And how did you come across those folks to interview them specifically? Yes. Yeah, so they are from all walks of life, although about 80 to 90 percent of the women are Asian of Asian descent because it was really important for me to highlight you know, women for, for who women of Asian descent who've been, you know, eight figure earners, nine figure earners who've been right. able to have like two million followers on Instagram, just showcase different types, right? Different um, cultures, different career paths, because right. it was really important, especially until now, you know, when people think Asian, they just think we all come from China and we don't, right. <laughs> you know, Asia's <laughs> the biggest continent in the world. It's made up of like 50 countries and we all don't come from China. So being able to even showcase a diverse group of Asian women was really important. Um, so, I mean, when I first started, it's funny because people asked me this uh, last week, like, how did you start? How did you start reaching out to people? I really started with my friends, you know, right. the people who I knew the, who were close to me because back then I'd had no influence. Nobody knew who I was. And so I just asked my friends, hey, can I interview you on my podcast? It would be really great if you can just kind of help me get started with this. And right. so I was able to interview about three or four of my friends. And then after that, I started reaching out to 
women on social media reach out through their emails, through their assistants, asking if they could be um, interviewed on the podcast. And I always led with my purpose, which was to highlight more women, to empower women. And having that purpose was really important because especially when you have no influence, it has to do, you have to have something that's bigger than you For that sure. people can align with. So they say, oh yeah, I, I, I would love to do that. Right. And not everyone says yes. <laughs> Right. I, get posted. I have followed up with guests for like four years straight. I mean, it's not easy, but it's it's necessary so we can create the changes that we need to see in this world. So that's that's how it started. It really started out of me wanting something and realizing, hey, maybe I'm not the only one who needs this. And right. so, yeah. I appreciate your authenticity and just tell and transparency and just telling us about the the people that you've um, encountered and, and the trials and tribulations that you had to go through to get started. Because I think oftentimes people see people like you and they think, oh, well, she just must have it all together. Um, so I definitely appreciate you sharing that, sharing that with us. And then you said the fact that you've been trying to get in contact with people for four years. That's, that's, that's what you call persistence for sure. Uh, most, so many people stop after the first or second try. Can you tell us a little bit about persistence and how that's helped you in your walk? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, being persistent was something that I didn't even know I had. I realized that if I wanted something, I was just gonna, I was just gonna keep doing it until I get it right. And um, sometimes that could take one week. Sometimes that could take four years. Right. And I think I really got that from my great grandfather. I mean, he started his own business in the Philippines, and one of his values that he lives by is persistence because mm -hmm. he's been through, he went through a lot of challenges and setbacks, but he always got picked himself back up and kept moving forward. Right. And so I think, I guess that trait was passed down to us yeah. and realize, okay, persistence is some, you know, it's not about being the smartest or the most talented. Now, I'm not saying that that's not part of it. Yes, it's, it's something that you need, but really persistence is the most important part. Like if you want to learn something, you're going to figure it out. You're going to, you're going to, you know, stay up all night to figure out what that is. You're going to find every way possible to find that answer so that you can know how to create a YouTube video or even create a background on Zoom or start a business or become an influencer. Like these are, you know, nothing happens overnight. And, you know, the problem sometimes on social media, you see like this overnight success look, <laughs> not realizing it's been 10 years, it's been 15 years. Right. I think one of the best examples that I've seen of like someone really sharing their story was Lizzo. You know, she she, yeah. she tweeted something where she's like, most of the time she sang for free or she sang for beer. She, you know, she didn't even sing for money. She sang for beer. And she had to like hit every single club just to get people to notice her. Right. right. Like she put in the work till to get to where she is today. Right. So if she didn't go through all those all those clubs or sing for free or sing for beer, like she wouldn't be here today. Right. Um, Another one is like the founder of Tofurky. I think he mentioned like the first 10 years, his revenue is only like 30,000. And of course, wow. most people would probably quit. It's like, what are you doing with your life, right? right. But he stuck by it. And now Tofurky is like a multi-million dollar it, like business, right? right? But like he never gave up, he just kept going. And of course, you know, the, if you really believe in something and you like, you just have this conviction you had to go for it, right? But there's times too where it's like, you know, things change, situations change, and maybe the thing that you're going for isn't in alignment with you anymore. And that's also okay to let go, right? right? I think sometimes we see people, you can't quit, you can't give up, you have to keep on going. But if it doesn't like, but if, if it's not aligned with you anymore, it doesn't give you joy or like, you know, like it, it just doesn't fuel you, then I right. think it's also okay to quit. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, like we're human. Things change, perspective change, our missions change, we evolve as humans. So things are going to change for sure, right? It's not always a linear thing. So when you're having one of those moments, and I know oftentimes as entrepreneurs, we have those ebbs and flows, or even just, you know, just being a, a woman in general, all the hats that we wear, the mom, the, the daughter, the employee, um, 
how do you how do you get through those tough times and and do it with a sense of grace when it helps you rise up and have more confidence that's a great question there's days where i don't do it with grace <laughs> sometimes i like to eat my feelings a lot yeah, I see especially you. when you get rejected a hundred times in a row yeah. Um, and I think that's okay to say, right? Like we have bad days. Sometimes we just need a tub of ice cream or something. Right. Um, but I think the most important is surrounding myself with other women who will lift me up. Because, you know, unfortunately, part of the problem why women don't advance as fast as men is because we're also part of the problem, right? You know, I mean, I used to work in an office and the, the people who targeted me all the time was women, unfortunately. And it's like, you know, as women, we shouldn't be fighting each other. We should be finding ways to work together mm-hmm. towards sure. a bigger purpose. And yeah. so I, I surround myself with women who have no jealousy, who want women, who want to see each other soar, who, you know, talk to each other when they're the good, bad and the ugly. Yeah. And so when I, when days are, when I have days like that, I, I go to, to that support system, right? Telling them, oh, today sucked. I just want to cry. I just want to hide. I just want to eat like three bags of chips. <laughs> Um, but like, especially in entrepreneurship, it's so lonely. Like you need to have that support system. And oh, like, you do. We also need to just change this narrative that, you know, women are catty with each other as women, you know, we, we can work together. I mean, yeah. I mean, one of the reasons why men actually advance more than women is because they actually know how to work together. And, you know, this is something that I've always noticed when I go to networking events, like guys just like meet each other for the first time have a couple laughs, exchange business cards, and then they're like, okay, let's do business. Like, that's it. It's like so simple, right? Right. And as women, sometimes we look each other down, we have to size each other up, we have to like figure out what's her end game. Um, (laughs) It's just a lot. I mean, you know, I'm not trying to bring women down. I'm just, I'm just trying to bring awareness that, you know, we're also part of the problem, right? And we've all been there. We've all been jealous of something or we've, we've, you know, we've done something we're not proud of. Um, but I think that, I think this is also just an important topic to talk about. That's all. <laughs> so when it comes to building confidence, I'm sure people are out there wondering, girl, how do I, how do I start my confidence journey? What would you recommend that people do just to get started? Yeah, I think, I think the most important is start small. Like you don't have to make big leaps to build confidence. And in fact, it's a small daily actionable steps that yield the big results. So an example, it's like, maybe you want to run a marathon, but you've never ran a a meter. (laughs) So how do you expect to run 42 kilometers if you've never even ran one meter or one kilometer? So you start, start small. You start with one kilometer, right? Let's see, today I'm going to run one kilometer. Okay, I did it. I was able to conquer it. Right. Maybe tomorrow you want to run a, an extra half of a kilometer. Right. So you achieve it. And then you just slowly add it until you reach the 42 kilometers, right? Yeah. You're not going to run 42 kilo- kilometers the first time you do it because you're going to die. <laughs> That's death. So, of course, you have to take it little by little. Or, you know, everyone wants to write a book. They're like, oh, my God, writing a book is so hard because they, like, see this thing and they feel like they have to write a book in two days. Not realizing, you know, you can take it in small, small doses. Like, if you just committed to writing a page a day for a whole year straight, guess what? You have a book. In fact, you can right. make it into two books. So just taking those small, small steps, creating small, achievable goals. Um, it, You know, I read this article from Forbes of this woman CEO, she calls it low, low self-confidence. No, low risk self-confidence where you okay. just, you know, it's, it's not the risk factor. Isn't that that bad? Like say you're, you want to prepare for an interview. Like, you know, you're going to ask like your sister to add, to like help you practice. Right? right. Because even if you screw up, it's your sister. It's not the end <laughs> of the world. But if you keep, you know, practicing in front of people, you know, and then by the time you get to that interview, like you'll feel more at ease because you've practiced, you've prepared for it. So exactly, um, those are some of the things I would mention. Um, just really having those small daily actionable steps is the most important. So I know when it when it came to you writing the book, is that how you started your book? If, if did you do it that page a day, or did you do something different? Oh, I totally did something different. First off, so the book, the Tower of Self Confidence, I was actually given a very tight deadline to 
write the whole manuscript because they wanted it out for the month of May, which is Asian Heritage Month. Okay. And so actually less than three months to write this book, but it was still split into like parts, right? I was given three due dates to hand it in. So I didn't have to write the whole book at once and give it in. It's like part one is due this date, part two is due this date, part three is due this date. So that, that helped me out a lot because then I just knew how, how many words I needed to write for that moment. Okay. And, and it, I just had to, a deadline that I could follow. And so when I can follow deadlines, it's great. When I have no deadline, it's terrible. Right. <laughs> like I will procrastinate till there's no tomorrow. So, um, so having deadlines is great. Um, being able to split it in like actionable, like small actionable steps, still great. And I was able to accomplish it based on that. And also one of my good friends, she told me when it came to writing is to write like you're drunk and edit like you're sober. sober. Not literally, <laughs> of course, but that really helped me out a lot because when you're writing, like, especially women, we tend to overthink, right? Well, does this sound good? Do I make sense? Will people like it? You know, am I just writing gibberish? Like all these thoughts come in our heads and it actually right. freezes us and stops us from writing. So instead you just write, you just write and then figure it out later. <laughs> Cool, but I know that you had told me that you had started off with writing a chapter in another book though. Yes. Right? Um, so yes, that one was a little bit simple because I actually didn't even have to write that. Um, I just did an audio interview, a podcast interview, and then it got transcribed. And oh, wow. And transformed into a book. Okay. So, you know, a lot of people think writing a book means you have to like sit down and write, which is fine. That's one way. But there's other ways, right? Like you can talk into a recorder and have it transcribed. Um, a lot of people hire ghostwriters. That's what they don't even know, right? Like, especially those famous people, like really, really famous people. Some of the, most of them, about 90% of them hire a ghostwriter. You think wow. they have time to write a book? No, they have someone, they hire someone who follows them so they can figure out the writing style and then write the book for them. And, you know, you can look this up on the internet. So it's not like I'm, you know, talking gibberish like you know some there's just different ways of writing a book and that's what people don't realize <laughs> right but i wrote my book so <laughs> yeah so you say oh i wrote mine right i wrote mine but i'm just saying there's people out there who spend who, who spend a lot of money to have a ghostwriter awesome 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 another thing that i was just wondering so we've talked about writing a book we've talked about starting a new skill like maybe even running a marathon and kind of putting that into play what would you tell someone that is wanting to do something different in their career um to make a change somehow how would they step out and courage i think that's the same just take small incremental steps right like you know let's say you have a job and you want to do a side hustle like you know just 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 start right start messy first of all because there's no perfect moment like <laughs> you're gonna make mistakes you're gonna fall down i still make a lot of mistakes until today um, but I'm grateful for it because it's helped me learn what to look out for, what to advise other people. But like, sometimes you just got to start, like, say you want to start, I don't know, an e-commerce store, like figure out how to do that. Right. Do you need your own website? Right. Do you need something like Shopify, you know, put up your first product. If that product didn't sell, then maybe try another product. Right. right. Um, you know, just do it slowly, little bit by little bit, be able to learn and then apply what you learn because. I know sometimes we end up, you know, just overload and learning and then we don't do anything. So right. this is right. literally learning as you're earning. This is not like school where you're going to get an F if you failed your test. It's like you can still make mistakes and still make money, you know, exactly. which is a great thing. Sometimes your greatest opportunities can come from your mistakes. So um, I think just doing it, like I said, start messy. Like we're all a hot mess and that's okay. What do you think reality TV shows do so well? Because they're all a hot mess and we're all like drawn to it, right? Right. These messy stories is something that we can relate to because it just shows that we're all human and exactly. that we just go through these things. I appreciate you saying that because oftentimes when you see on social media, you see all this perfection and people think that they have to measure up to that perfection when in actuality, they're just putting on a show and things may be a hot mess for them too, but they're just putting on a facade that it's all well. So I do appreciate you saying that because the messy is how we figure it out for sure. We don't figure it out when it's perfect and everything goes our way. We figure it out when it's messy. For sure, for sure. So I know you told us, I mean, you told me earlier about a 
confidence quiz that you had. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so I have a free confidence quiz where you know you answer a couple of questions and it'll tell you what pers- what confidence personality you have. Um, so you'll get you'll get it right away. You'll also get it sent to your inbox. It's very simple. It's very quick. It's probably about like five minutes, and you, you'll have your personality revealed. So you can just go to my website, um, shinayapchan.com, and at the top right, you're able to take the quiz. Awesome. So I got the quiz here on the screen. So if you guys want to take the quiz, you can definitely take it. I'm just curious, you how many different personalities are there based on your quiz? Oh, it's just three. So oh, okay. Okay. yeah, it's very simple. <laughs> right. Okay. So three personalities. So you'll get to see which one of three that you'll have. Now, is it oftentimes do people have a combination of the three or is it just definitely one of the three? Yeah. So there's like two different ones and then a combination of the two ah okay so that's how you did it awesome awesome well that was gonna be great i'm super excited about taking the test and i'm sure you guys are too so i'm if just i know you kind of already told us this to give us a start for those that want to do something different is to start but is there any other advice you would give someone that's wanting to make a change and doing it confidently I think it's important to ask for help. You know, we don't have to do everything ourselves. Mm. And I think it's also important to learn that it's okay to receive help when someone offers it. Um, You know, growing up in my culture, like we're we're told not to ask for help. And so when people even offer help, like it was really hard for me to say yes, because I'd start getting anxiety. So Mm. that's, I think, the most important, like be okay to ask for help, be okay to receive help. Just know you don't have to do it yourself and you don't always have to figure things out, especially as women. You know, we think we have to like be the superwoman for everything, but no, we can actually ask for help or find different ways to make our lives a little bit easier. Well, that's some great advice, Sheena. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us today. Uh, We appreciate your time. And those of you that are watching, thanks for watching. And we appreciate your time and attention. And of course, if you know of anyone you would like me to interview, by all means, DM me and let me know. Thanks for watching and bye for now.